Hello and welcome to our first edition of Inside Story, our weekly show where we take a deep dive into the week's biggest news story. India Today was the first channel to break the fact that the popular front of India was all set to be banned. And just hours later, that actually took place. Here on Inside Story, over the next 30 minutes, we're going to tell you about the organization and why the government on September the 28th decided to bring the axe down after years of dilly-dallying. This is the story of the ban of the PFI. As the clamor for a ban on the radical organization PFI grows, there's been a huge part two crackdown pan-India. Many of those raids and detentions are still currently on as we bring you this live broadcast. India today was bang on when center banned the PFI for five years under the stringent unlawful activities law. Eight of PFI-linked groups too faced the ban. They include the Campus Front, Imam Council, Rehab India Foundation. जिसके खिलाफ सबूत मिलते जाएंगे उसी के खिलाफ कार्रवाई करेंगे। हम किसी ऐसे संगठन या ऐसे व्यक्ति के खिलाफ पूर्वाग्रह से ग्रस्त होकर के कोई कार्रवाई नहीं करते। The center cited PFI radicalization plots, its links to global terror groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda, acts of terror and crimes including fanning hijab stir, CAA unrest and profit fire. Illegal overseas fund flow and illicit foreign links, chopping hands of a Kerala professor, murder of RSS-linked individuals, and plotting suicide bomb attacks to justify the sweeping ban. State governments will take uh, further action as deemed fit as per the Act, Unlawful Activity Act. We will take action as deemed fit after the notifications are issued. Dozens of PFI cadre are in custody for radicalization plots, violent protests and links to terror groups. Doing all anti-national activities and time had come to ban this organization and this is, this is a message for all the anti-national groups that they will not survive doing anti-national activity in this country. This is uh, a very, very welcoming move. I'd like to express our gratitude to Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah for this uh, bold action. While MNS workers celebrated and distributed sweets, security was tightened nationwide at PFI offices. Will the PFI ban help India's fight on terror or will it lead PFI to regroup itself under a different name? Bureau Report, India Today. At least for the last three years, the popular front of India has been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. They call themselves a social movement. The government and their detractors have called them a radical extremist Islamic movement with the latest flourish showing colors of terror intent as well. That's the reason why they were banned. But what was their journey like? Where did they actually come from? What was their origin? Did they have a relationship with earlier banned organizations? Take a look at what the PFI really was from birth till ban. In the aftermath of Babri Masjid demolition of 1992, different socio-political organizations came into being to give a platform to the voices of the minorities in India. The National Development Front of Kerala, Karnataka Forum for Dignity and Manita Niti Pasari of Tamil Nadu were among many others. More than a decade later, by 2006, these three organizations along with other small groups merged to form the Popular Front of India. PFI in 2022 claimed to have spread across the length and breadth of the country. With broadening of its base, PFI shifted its original headquarters from Kurikod in Kerala to the national capital. But its top leadership still mainly remained from Kerala. Intelligence agencies claim that most of its erstwhile leaders were members of the banned outfit Students Islamic Movement of India 
or the simi. PFI Kada wore a uniform and often conducted drills at public places. On February 17 every year, it conducted unity marches at all district headquarters. It had Kada training centers in many districts and usually associated with many human rights organizations. But intelligence agencies claim that behind this somber face lies a sinister terror module that helps it to mobilize funds, especially from the Middle East. When the Hadia Jahan case came up in 2018, PFI for the first time earned the label of being involved in love jihad cases. Hadia alias Akhila's father, Kia Shokan, had alleged that her husband, Chef in Jahan, was an active member of the PFI. Police later found that Akhila was converted in a religious school being controlled by the PFI called Satya Sarani in Malapuram district of Kerala. But PFI have always held that these allegations were baseless and an attempt to divert public attention from issues that matter. मुझे पीएफआई के शक में लिया गया है बल्कि किसी और नहीं किसी तरह के कोई लिंक नहीं कभी कोई मीटिंग नहीं कभी कोई वो नहीं और मुझे जो लिया गया है ना वो पीएफआई के किसी बंदे जी सर्च थी लेकिन वो नहीं मिला और मुझे मेरे घर से तो आप बंदे कहाँ गए आपके पीएफआई से कोई लिंक नहीं नहीं पीएफआई से कभी कोई हमारी किसी तरह की मीटिंग नहीं है वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और हम सोशल डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया हैं तो अब जो है मसला यही है कि कोई भी रूलिंग पार्टी के खिलाफ अगर कोई पार्टी खड़ी होगी तो वो अपना अंजाम जेल समझ ले Popular Front of India had a student wing active in campuses called the Campus Front of India. And SDPI or the Social Democratic Party of India is its political outfit. In 2016 assembly elections in Kerala, SDPI contested on many seats but managed less than 1% of votes. For years it has tried its best to seize the support base of the Muslim League but not with any success. In Kerala, the PFI also had a women's wing, the National Women's Front. Several times since 2013, intelligence agencies have claimed that the Popular Front of India is linked to terror fundings and activities. In 2014, the Kerala government submitted an affidavit in the High Court saying that PFI activists were involved in at least 27 political murders, 86 attempts to murder cases and more than 125 cases for whipping up communal passions. In 2015, 13 of its workers were awarded life term for chopping the palm of a college professor, T.J. Joseph, for allegedly preparing a blasphemous question paper. Since 2016, the Popular Front of India has been mired in many political cases as well. In 2018, six PFI activists were held in connection with the murder of an ABVP leader in Kannur. In 2019, nine of its activists were arrested for allegedly killing SFI leader Abhimanyu in Maharaja's College in Ernakulam. In 2020 has been most significant in terms of how frequently PFI has been named in different cases ranging from anti-CAA or NRC protest to the Delhi riots to the Kerala gold scam to Bengaluru riots. And then came the case of arrest of journalist Siddiq Kappan during Hathras rape case. Originally from Kerala, Siddiq Kappan worked as a reporter for Malayalam news website Ardimugam and also held the post of secretary in Delhi unit of Kerala Union of Working Journalists. He was on his way to Uttar Pradesh's Hathras where a Dalit woman had died after allegedly being raped when police arrested him along with three others. Police claimed that all four men allegedly were linked to the Popular Front of India and its associate outfits. Kappan has been lodged in UP jails since his arrest in October 2020 booked under various sections of the Indian Penal Code. The Unlawful Activities Prevention Act and the IT Act apart from the PMLA by the law enforcement agencies. While Siddhi Kappan's bail application in the PMLA case is still underway in the Lucknow Court, he was granted bail by the Apex Court in the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act case on 9th September. 
so far 353 PFI members have been arrested in NIA ED raids. PFI members have been linked to terror funding and have been allegedly plotted to establish Ghazbai Hind. They have been linked to Fulwari Sharif terror module in Patna and allegedly ran weapons training camp in the name of Karate Camp in Telangana. PFI has been linked to BJP member Praveen Netarul murder in Karnataka and allegedly funded hijab protest in 2022. On 28 September, PFI disbanded all of its banned outfits following the MHA order. From pen drives with ISIS videos to presentations talking about an India Islamic Republic by 2047 to other disturbing literature, what was it that finally tipped the scales against the popular front of India? How did they dodge a ban for so long? And what was it that the government found in raids across India that finally convinced them that a ban was inescapable? Take a look. This was an India Today exclusive. Two raids. At least 350 taken in over the past week. And the organization, its affiliates, declared outlawed in their wings. ये सब जांच का विषय है जांच की प्रक्रिया चल रही है जांच पूरी होगी तो धीरे-धीरे सारी जानकारियां आपसे शेयर करेंगे जिसके खिलाफ सबूत मिलते जाएंगे उसी के खिलाफ कार्रवाई करेंगे हम किसी ऐसे संगठन या ऐसे व्यक्ति के खिलाफ पूर्वाग्रह से ग्रस्त होकर के कोई कार्रवाई नहीं करते इंडिया टुडे हैज एक्सेस डॉसियर दैट रिवील्स व्हाट ऑल इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसीज फाउंड फ्रॉम पीएफआई सस्पेक्ट देयर हाइडआउट्स होम्स एंड ऑफिसेस ड्यूरिंग द रेड्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री the swoop in Uttar Pradesh led to the recovery of a bomb-making manual. The guide to building an improvised explosive device was seized from PFI leaders Muhammad Nadeem from Barabanki and Ahmad Beg Nadvi from Khadra in UP. The manual offers a short course in making IEDs from easily available materials. Worse, it calls to fight and slay the pagan wherever found. Besides pen drive seized during the raids in Uttar Pradesh, contained videos related to ISIS. That's not all. In the raids down south in Tamil Nadu, investigators found two handheld marine radio sets and GPS equipped navigators from an SDPI leader in Ramnath district. Unaccounted cash recovered from the residence of Shahid Khan, a PFI leader in Bengaluru. And the raids in Maharashtra led to the recovery of soft and hard copies of Mission 2047, a self-styled guide to convert India into an Islamic state by 2047. This material was seized from the possession of the PFI's vice president of the state. Investigating agencies treat the seizures as compelling evidence of the banned outfit's sinister plot to destabilize India. Bureau Report, India Today. Many political parties have had links either directly with the PFI or with its front organizations and affiliates. And that's one of the reasons why, in the wake of the ban on the PFI, there was a huge eruption of politics and ugly allegations of all sorts. Take a look at how the politics took center stage after the ban on the PFI. Ban was good. full ban. After years of pain, this is a very happy place. Some hope for justice. Families who lost their loved ones to hate killings allegedly by the Popular Front of India are comforted by the ban on the radical Islamist group. The banned outfit is linked to over 10 killings. R. Rudresh, an RSS worker from Karnataka, fell prey to the hardline organization's violence in 2016. His family hailed the ban ordered by the central government. Sharath Madiwala, another victim of hate, was murdered in Mangaluru in 2017. Five years later, his murderers still roam free. Rudresh 
There are many more like Sanjit and Nandu who were killed in Kerala. the family members of people who were killed by PFI gave the ban of central government but they still believe that five years ban is not going to serve purpose and it should be banned forever. And they also demand a stringent law against all these people where they don't get away in any kind of heinous crime. Their tears have dried up. The ban on the PFI gives them some relief. But true justice will be served only when all the killers are convicted and punished. With Sagai Raj in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. But in the terrible cycle of violence that the PFI has allegedly been part of, those who get left behind amidst these bans and politics are those families that have actually lost loved ones. From Praveen Netaru to others, at least 10 persons and 10 families whose murders have been linked to this outfit that's just been banned. Here's their story. इस पर प्रतिबंध लगाना देश के लिए स्वागत योग्य कदम आज प्रतिबंध लगाकर समय के अनुकूल प्रभावी कदम उठाया है उनके इस कदम का अभिनंदन करते हैं जो भी रैडिकलाइजेशन और एक्सट्रीमिज्म की तरफ किसी को लेकर जाता है उसको अपोज करने की जरूरत है रेडिकलाइजेशन हर तरफ हो रहा है वाई नॉट आर एस एस ऑल्सो दैट इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस केस अ बैन टर्न्स इन टू अ फोकल पॉइंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स द बीजेपी लेट सेंटर्स क्रैकडाउन ऑन द पी एफ आई हैज ब्रॉड द सैफ्रन पार्टी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स ओपोनेंट्स फेस टू फेस लीडर्स ऑफ द एंटी बीजेपी ब्लॉक फाउंड द बैन ऑन द पी एफ आई to be one sided they turned their heat on the rss claiming that it too deserved similar treatment pfi ka jaanch ho raha hai aur pfi ke tarah jitne bhi sangathan hai including rss isa par pratiban lagaiye former chief minister and congress leader in karnataka echoed similar views in kerala congress leader and mla ramesh chennitala insisted his party opposed communal extremism by the majority and minorities alike minority communalism and majority communalism both are dangerous they are the same uh, two sides of the uh, same coin so we the secular forces should come forward and fight against the terrorist activities of both why not rss also that is also important in this case in bihar the ruling jdu demanded the center take similar measure against the sank sri r k singh sahab hai wo ek samay mein grih sachiv hua karte the और गृह सचिव के रूप में उन्होंने एक बयान दिया है ऑन रिकॉर्ड कि आरएसएस के दस लोगों के खिलाफ आतंकवादी होने के साक्ष उपलब्ध है उस पर केंद्र सरकार को भी विचार करना चाहिए द समाजवादी पार्टी इन उत्तर प्रदेश कॉल्ड द बैन ऑन द पीएफआई एंड असोल्ट ऑन डेमोक्रेसी पार्टी एमपी शफीकुर रहमान बर्ग alleged the action against the outfit was unreasonable is tarike se band lagne lage hai to koi jata hai to khatam ji ji aise abhi inhone laga diya 
अब मेरी राय में तो इन आमना सिर्फ MIM called the ban unfair and UAPA as detriment to constitutional principles. While I have always opposed PFI's extreme and radical approach, I have always supported democratic approach. This ban on PFI cannot be supported because actions of some individuals who commit crime does not mean that the organization itself should must be banned. जो भी radicalization और extremism की तरफ किसी को लेकर जाता है, उसको oppose करने की ज़रूरत है। और अगर आप ये कह रहे हैं कि radicalization सिर्फ एक तरफ हो रहा है, नहीं radicalization हर तरफ हो रहा है। The BJP and the RSS hit back at its critics with full force, calling them the appeasers of anti-national forces. RSS पर उंगली उठाना, यानी एक किस्म से संविधान का अपमान है, लोकतंत्र का अपमान है, मानवता का अपमान है, शांति और सद्भाव का विरोध है। यूपीए के सरकार के समय में भी ये जानकारी थी कि यह एक हिंसक संस्था है, संविधान को नहीं मानती है, राष्ट्रद्रोही है, प्रोपाक या विदेशी शरीयंत्र के समर्थक है। हिंदुस्तान जिंदाबाद के बजाय पाकिस्तान जिंदाबाद के नारे लगाते हैं। कांग्रेस का हाथ, पीएफआई के साथ, कांग्रेस का हाथ हमेशा देश विरोधी ताकतों के साथ। आज फिर से कांग्रेस पार्टी उस पर सियासत कर रही है, राष्ट्रनीति और राष्ट्र सुरक्षा पर राजनीति कर रही है, जो कि उनका चरित्र रहा है। Politics on a high drive, some took an unambiguous stand, some a middle path. Some others chose to stay quiet for their own political compulsions. More so when elections loom in key states. Bureau Report, India Today. Inside Story will be back next week. Thanks so much for watching. Each week we'll pick up the biggest story of that week and go deeper.